Welcome back to the video lecture series of basic electrical engineering. In the last series of lecture, we have discussed about the losses in the transformer and the types of transformers. So, in the last series, uh, in the losses we have seen, there are mainly two losses. Copper loss and iron loss. The iron loss is further classified into eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. So we have seen the explanation for these losses and the equations with respect to them. And at the end of the last session, we have seen the different types of transformers based on their uh, end usage, the power supply, the construction design of core, etc. In this session, we will be looking at the efficiency of the transformer. So, what is an efficiency? So, the efficiency of a transformer is defined as the ratio of the output power to the input power. So, we know that the efficiency equation is given by or um, frequently denoted with the symbol eta. So, the efficiency is the ratio of output power by the input power. So, if, so obviously output power will be always less than the input power. So, the amount by which it is less, that is nothing but the loss what we are going to occur in the system. So, now if we write this output power in terms of the input power and losses. So, we are going to express this output power in terms of the input power and losses. So, that is going to be eta equals input power minus losses is nothing but my output power. So, input power minus losses divided by input power. Next, so we are just splitting this into its separate terms. So, input power by input power minus losses by the input power. So, in this step, what the losses was there, as we have seen in the previous video, we have the two losses, copper loss and iron loss. So, the loss, of, totally the loss of the transformer, that is the copper loss and iron loss. So, whatever we have the input power, minus the copper loss and minus the iron loss. So, further the losses term is split into two parts. So, that is the, the, those are the major loss what we have with respect to the transformer. So, now we will assume that the input power is given by the term V1 I1 cos phi1. So, let V1 I1 cos phi1 be the input power. And as we have known or uh, from the previous lecture series, the copper loss is given by I square R. Since we are dealing with respect to the any one of the winding, so either with respect to the primary winding, so that is given as I1 square R1. So now just we will replace the input power value and the copper loss value in this equation. So when we substitute that, so we are going to get the input power is substituted with V1 I1 cos phi1 and the copper loss is substituted by I1 square R1. So, this one indicates that we are dealing with the primary winding side. Okay. So, now, so as we know that, so this term is going to become 1. And, if you look, uh, we will take up a point here. So, this is going to become 1. And, this I1 square and will be got cancelled by this I1. So, at the next step what we have is, so this is going to become 1 minus 1 minus I1 R1. So, I1 square, this square is going to get cancelled by this I1. So, I1 R1 V1 cos phi1 minus Wi by V1 I1 cos phi1. 
at the next step we are going to differentiate this equation with respect to i1 so when we are going to differentiate so we have a constant term so we are differentiating with i1 and here it is 1 over i1 so when we differentiate the constant term is going to become 0 and this is going to become 1 and 1 by differentiation of uh, 1 by i1 is going to be minus 1 by i1 square so when we perform the differentiation with respect to i1 So when we differentiate the above equation with respect to i1, so what we are going to get is, so differentiation with respect to i1, so the constant value 1, so it's going to be 0, and uh, here we are a i1, so that is going to become, so d by d i1 of i1, so this is going to become 1, and here we are d by d i1 of 1 over i1 so that is going to be so it is d by d i1 of 1 by i1 so it is going to be minus 1 by i1 square so as it was earlier here it was minus so minus into minus it is going to become plus so w i whole divided by v1 i1 square plus y1 so next so in order for the maximum efficiency or the efficiency is going to be maximum when uh, d eta by d i1 term is going to be 0. So what we are deriving is for maximum efficiency. So therefore we are going to make this or this equation to equal to 0. So when we make it equal to 0 so what we have left out is with minus r1 divided by v1 cos phi1 plus wi v1 i1 square cos phi1 so now we will equate these two terms so just we will take up this term to the right hand side so when we write then the equation is going to be so r1 divided by v1 cos phi1 equals wi v1 i1 square cos phi1 so for this term, so for this expression, multiply and divide the LHS term by I1 square. So at the next, multiply and divide the LHS by I1 square. So when I am going to multiply that, then it is going to become I1 square R1. And when I am going to divide that, it is going to become V1 I1 square cos 5. So at the next step we have, so this is what when I multiply and divide I am going to get. So I1 square R1 whole divided by V1 I1 square cos phi 1 and that is equal to Wi V1 I1 square cos phi 1. So when I compare these two terms 1 over V1 I1 square cos phi 1 is equal on either side. So then we are going to cancel each other. Then what we have left out is with i1 square r1 which is equal to w. And we know that i1 square r1 is nothing but the copper loss wc or wcu. Sometimes we use wcu. So this is the condition for the maximum efficiency of a transformer. When the copper loss of a transformer equals to the iron loss then the transformer will function at its maximum efficient point. So as we have seen in the previous lecture, copper loss is a variable loss and the iron loss is a constant loss. So the copper loss depends on the load current. As the load varies, the current increases and thereby the copper loss also increases or decreases depending upon the load. And when as the load is varying and when the 
as the load varies, the current varies, and with respect to that, the copper loss also varies. And in that way, when the copper loss is going to become equal to the iron loss, then the efficiency will be maximum for a given transformer. So if they ask, derive the equation for maximum efficiency conditions. So then, so starting from the efficiency derive input efficiency equals output power by input power till this point, you need to derive. So sometimes they will ask, derive the expression for the efficiency at any load and any power factor. So for that, starting from the efficiency equation, the definition of efficiency. So we need to derive till this and then we are further to continue. So in that case, so the KVA of the transformer at which the maximum efficiency occurs will be derived as follows. So basically the transformers will be uh, rated or named with respect to their KVA. So usually like in case of a bulb we uh, buy 9 watt bulb, 7 watt bulb or 5 watt bulb. So similarly in case of a transformer it will be rated in terms of KVA. So K goes for kilo, V for voltage, A for ampere. So we know that the power is nothing but V into I. So where V and I is nothing but the represents the power of the transformer. So we know that as we have seen in the last slide at maximum efficiency the iron loss is equal to the copper loss. So I don't know what is that uh, maximum efficient point so that's why so let me assume that x is going to be the kv output at which we have the efficiency is maximum. So if this is the case then the copper loss is directly proportional to the full load kva whole square the copper loss will be directly proportional to the full load kva whole square so if this is the case so we know that at maximum efficiency wi is equal to the wc so as wi is equal to copper loss then i can write a, another equation as wi is directly proportional to x square X, X is nothing but the KV output at which we have the maximum efficiency. So from these two equations, I can write so X by full load KVA whole square is equal to WI by WCU. And if I write this equation in terms of X, then if I am going to remove this square, then it, this is going to be under square root. And this term is going to come across R. So x equals full load kva into square root of wi by wc so then the final equation what we have for the efficiency calculation given any load and any power factor is given by eta x equals x into kva into 1000 into power factor whole divided by x into kva into 1000 into power factor plus wi plus x square wc so wherein the x represents the value of the full load at which we have maximum efficiency so we will frequently use the value of x so in case of a full load the value of x we will be taking it as 1 in case of half load then the value of x will be taking 1 by 2 so this is the very important equation in order to solve the numericals as well as if they ask in the exam to derive an expression for the efficiency at any load and any power factor, you need to derive till this point. So with respect to this, we have covered all the theoretical topics of module 3, chapter 1. And at the last, list out all the 
formulas what we have derived or used from the beginning of this chapter. So the transformation ratio so I1 by I2 is equal to E2 by E1 which is equal to N2 by A N1 and that is denoted by the term K. So we have derived the EMF equation and that is given by so with respect to the primary winding so 4.44 F N P phi M similarly with respect to the secondary winding. So the total copper loss is equal to the copper loss of the primary winding plus the secondary winding. So the ND current loss is given by WE equals beta BM square F square T square V watts. Similarly, hysteresis loss is given by eta BM power 1.6 F into V watts. Then the full load loss can be calculated as input power minus output power. And at last, the efficiency equation at any load and any power factor is given by the eta x equation with a value of x equals 1 for full load and x equals half for half full load. In order to calculate the load for which we have the maximum efficiency, we use full load kVA into square root of iron loss by full load copper loss. So these were the important formulas we use in solving the numerical. So in the next video lecture, we will be looking at solving the numericals based on the EMF equation and efficiency equation. Thank you.